So we think earth engine is a great tool to try and understand how these transformations can affect flood vulnerability. Um, the way that we're doing this on the social side is to adapt methods developed by Susan Cutter at the University of South Carolina, which runs a principal component analysis on US Census data. What you're seeing here is a map of social vulnerability for the state of New York run on census tract data, and a list of the variables that influence vulnerability in that region. However, when we begin to run it at smaller scales, we begin to see new census tracts pop up and new demographic variables become important. Um, so one example, the Lower Hudson watershed, which includes the city of New York, has pretty different demographics than, say, the northern state of New York. And there might be different variables that explain who's most vulnerable. And a disaster manager might want to understand those. Um, you may even have a storm path and you want to understand where you should go to evacuate people first. And this flexible tool that you can run at any scale can kind of show you the, these places in bright red that you need to focus on. Um, the way that we're making biophysical vulnerability analysis more dynamic is to take a machine learning approach. So this basically takes a watershed, uh, looks for flood observations, and then tries to relate that to data that's already in Earth Engine, which is rainfall, impervious surface, distance to rivers, topographic index, and others. We try to train the data and reproduce that flood observation event. And this requires us to do it over many events, over many locations, so we need a lot of flood observation. We were originally gonna use the Dartmouth Flood Observatory data for this, but the data's a little messy and they said, why don't you just do it yourself in Earth Engine from MODIS data? So we're working on it. Um, so if you take a MODIS tile, you can look at three days and six MODIS images, apply some simple band thresholding, the same metrics that they use. And we've been able to reproduce their flood observations here in pink, ours are in red. We're still working on removing some clouds, but I think we'll be able to do it. Um, and we've been applying this to other places around the world. This is an assessment we're doing for the World Bank in India to look at how biophysical and social vulnerability changed after major flooding there in 2013. One of the best uses of Earth Engine for this was to understand how rivers change. After you have a glacial lake outburst flood, you can have a lot of avulsions and the rivers change and so you have new risk areas. So you need to see how those change over time and we've classified them and have given that um, algorithm to the local government there to try and apply in future situations. Um, so what we're ideally going for is to create this kind of dynamic map where you can zoom in anywhere in the world and look at flood exposure and social vulnerability, try and see how that might change over time as climate or population or land use changes, and run statistics on that. So this is dummy data. This isn't real flood risk, don't worry, but this is ideally what we're trying to produce to try and communicate how our changing world influences flood vulnerability in new ways. Um, and thanks to Catherine and Devin and Dana and Christian and many other people in this room who have contributed to this project in really awesome ways.